But once again, this game is not running from my SSD. Oh my God, I really should learn to drive. Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about how to export the, your Steam library onto a 10 gigabit NAS. Now this is important because 10 GB NAS has become fantastically affordable. And for a number of you out there with these enormous Steam libraries of games, you know, from Humble Bundle deals to Black Friday deals, New Year deals and more, you want to get as many games as you can when they're cheap. But a lot of the time you don't have the space on your gaming machine. Now this laptop here has got a 500 or so gig hard drive uh, SSD inside which is great because you need fast access to a number of those files but with modern games sometimes ranging from as you know 40 or 50 gig after updates mods and patches going as high as one two or three hundred gigabytes in size you can't actually hold a number of games on your gaming rig and so many of our Steam library games live there on the cloud and what we want is to be able to download them and have them readily accessible now why would you do that why not just leave them on the cloud well First and foremost, all too often games get pulled. Maybe it's because the brands themselves <coughs> no longer uh, pay to have that file hosted on Steam's platform. Uh, in some cases, a game is removed due to you know incompatibility or controversy. Look at PT, a game that was abandoned in production, that new Silent Hill game. And when the PT demo came out, as soon as the game got canned, the demo got panned. And now it's very hard to get hold of that game. All too often, versions of games don't no longer be supported, or once a game is no longer available on multiplayer, all too often uh, a manufacturer of a game will no longer host that game on their servers. And even though you've paid good money for a game in digital form, if it's no longer supported anywhere and you don't have a copy, it's gone. So that's another reason why a number of you are looking for a localised means to have your games. Now, putting games from your Steam library on a normal NAS, a 1GBE NAS, it's just not good enough. The speeds of 1 GB, if you aren't already aware by the name, are 1 gigabit. So, in other words, that's going to give you 100 or so megabytes per second access speed, which is nowhere near as compatible as the SSD in your host system, which is going to give you typically around 350 to 500 gig, uh, megabits per second access, which is very important indeed for running these games where the textures and files need to be accessed really, really quickly. So, 10 GB gives us that advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a game in Steam using a 10 GBE NAS. So we're going to put all the game files on the 10 GBE NAS and still run the game. And I'm going to show you guys how an affordable 10 GBE solution will allow you to download all of your Steam games, have them readily accessible and protect you from if these games no longer become available on the cloud. So let's move over to the screen and go through this together. Right, well, here we are on the desktop of the PC here. What we're going to be utilising throughout this video is a few little tools in how to install your Steam library on a 10 gigabit Ethernet NAS. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen here, I'm going to try as much as possible to keep the system resources on screen just to show you how little or as much is being utilised. The ones I need you to look at the most are memory, C drive, and Ethernet. The reason being that these are the ones that will be taking the most action. What we want is the C drive to be as low as possible because we want all of the files we're accessing to be over the network. In other words, on this Ethernet connection here. Now for those that aren't aware, if you do get a 10 gigabit Ethernet now, you don't necessarily have to have a 10 gigabit Ethernet port on your PC or Mac system. You can get away with a Thunderbolt 10 GB adapter. One common example is one we're using today. This is the Sonnet Solo 10G, and there are other ones available, such as the QNAP one as well. But that's what we're going to utilize. Now, straight away, before we go into this, it's important that you understand the difference between an Ethernet uh, connected drive, a mapped network drive, and a local drive. This PC here has an SSD inside. And if we go to uh, any old file, so this is in one of the folders here, if I take these five files, copy them, and then paste them onto the desktop, the first thing you will notice, because we're running onto an SSD, is this will suddenly leap up. It's suddenly gone up to 90 odd percent, and that's because we are using the SSD inside to write data. So if we delete those. Now, if we do the same thing with a 10 gigabit ethernet drive, 
we aren't going to use the C drive as much. Yes, we'll be writing from it, but if we have all of the files on a mapped networked drive, in this case our 10 gigabit Ethernet drive, we won't have to use the SSD to run the games. All the drive, all the games will live on the NAS, but they'll still run on this PC, and that's what we need to happen. So once you've got a 10, gig, uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet NAS, be it a QNAP or a Synology, in this case we're using a Synology, what you need to do is map that as a network drive. So in the case of this, I've set up this NAS drive, and if you use the Synology Assistant software, head over, right click, go to Map Drive, and then from there, log in to the NAS, and then it really is a straightforward process to find the drives that are on the NAS, and then it will, you can choose the one you want to go for. Now, in the case of this NAS, I'm utilizing hard drives. So instead of an SSD, which can be very expensive, I've just put three bog standard 4TB hard drives, which are pretty cheap, inside this NAS in a RAID 5 environment. And the idea is that we want this game to run as smoothly as if it was on the desktop PC, because that is the whole point. We want all of our files off of our PC onto that 10GBE NAS so we can download every single game and file we want on our Steam library. So there we are. If we go to the main uh, selection of drives, there's our C drive, that SSD. And again, it's a bog standard single SSD inside there. It's just a Micron 512 gig SATA SSD. And over here, we have a RAID 5 um, a net mapped network drive of three hard drives that are RAIDed together. Typically, the read and write of a single hard drive will be between 100 and 200 megabytes per second, depending on if it's 7200 or 5400 RPM. But three drives in a RAID 5 will give us not dissimilar speeds to that of a standard hard drive. If we use AJA for testing and we select our standard SSD inside, these are our read and write speeds of that SSD. And again, these will fluctuate between 250 and 500 megs in terms of write and read. And if we do a speed test on that RAID 5 by 10 GBE, we can see that the speeds are the same, or if sometimes even better. And that's what's important, because in RAID, you are reading and writing onto multiple drives at once, and that can multiply your read and write speeds. And that's how a NAS over 10 GBE uh, for your Steam library will give you the same speed as that of the SSD on your host system. But it works out so, so much cheaper in terms of storage. So now you know the setup we're utilizing, now you want to see it in action. Well, the first thing you need to do when you log into your Steam account is head to Steam and then the Settings. From the Settings menu, you will be able to go to the Download section and change the Steam library. In the case of this, if case, when you do set up your network drive, open the Steam library folders, add a library folder, then up the top here, find that mapped network drive you created earlier which is what I've done, and then it creates a new folder, which I've already done in advance. Then you just need to head over to your library and download the games into that mapped network drive. Now I've already installed a few games, unfortunately we didn't have time to get Quake finished and it is a big old file, but once again the whole point of this is so that you can have all of your games in one location and not have to keep downloading them time and time again. But Without further ado, let's try a demo here. We're gonna go for the demo of Inside. And from here, all these games now live on the 10 GB NAS. If we go to the properties, we go to local files, we can see it's on the Z drive, which if you need reminding, Z is our mapped network drive. So, without further ado, let's play the game. And remember, this game is now playing on the NAS. It is not playing uh, with files on the local SSD. Now, I have put these games into window mode just to show you um, that they do run and we can look at the system settings as they play. Because as this game is loading, you may notice already the Ethernet has started spiking and that is because we are accessing the NAS. We aren't accessing the local SSD. Also, you can see the memory and the CPU are creeping up 
but disk utilization is all but nil. There's obviously going to be background uh, access to that drive, but that's about it. So let's make our way into this game. Again, this PC is doing lots of things at once, so don't be surprised if the FPS fails, but that's nothing to do with the 10 GBE. As you can see, we're playing inside, and as we play more, it's going to continue to access that NAS. If while it's doing that, we log into the NAS itself, we can have a look at the system resources being utilized on the NAS while that game is playing. So we log into the user interface of our NAS, and once again, the game is still playing. It's still there. It's a bloody dark game, if anyone's played it. It's probably not the best game to play on limited light, such as this. Anyone that's ever played Inside Out, we'll just sort of run over there. Go to the NAS. Go to Resource Monitor. And we'll be able to see that storage is being utilized on this device. Now again, as we play the game, it is worth mentioning that, of course, Inside Out, although a very pretty game, is by no means a hugely demanding game. It should, it should make a vast amount of difference in terms of what we are doing here, because even if it was a hugely demanding game um, that has been released this week, then it won't make a huge amount of difference, because these games are all designed to be played from SATA based drives. They are all designed with SATA or indeed sometimes NVMe storage in mind, but the difference between NAS and local storage will not make a blind bit of difference. How a game plays is l far more dedicated to your GPU. So let's go for Euro Truck Simulator. We're going to play this game and we're going to play the demo of Euro Truck Simulator 2. Again, we've already put this game in windowed mode. Um, and we'll try and keep an eye, oh, a minute, we're going to have to tab out onto that task manager, move that there, put that so we can see it all the time, and go back into the game. So we'll carry on playing, so we're going to play this, carry on where we left off. And again, you can see that the C drive is barely being utilised during this. But the network, obviously because we're loading a game, is going absolutely crazy. It's reading at 70 megabits per second. And now it's loading up the settings on this game. And again, anyone that's ever played this game before can verify that the loading screens on this game aren't the quickest. And largely you can tell that this is nothing to do with the Ethernet network and all to do with our system resources. Again, ignore the graphics, because to be perfectly honest, we're going to blame that on my PC and moreover, the fact that my GPU is probably going absolutely bananas. Indeed, I have only got embedded graphics on this, and the CPU utilization is creeping up constantly. But, once again, this game is not running from my SSD. Oh my god, I really should learn to drive. Um, but, what I'll do now is I'll um, cancel out of this game, because to be perfectly honest, I think we've proven our point on this. If we exit our games, we'll be able to talk about what we've learned today. There, we'll end Euro Trucks, end task. And again, if we go into our library, right click, properties, and as you can see, it was on the Z drive. Now, there's an enormous number of potential possibilities for what you can do here. For a start, so many of these games are absolutely huge. If we go for the most recently released games, for example, if we go to the store and we look at games that have just been released, we can see that 500 gig for an internal SSD is just not enough. And if we go to the most recent releases, even something fairly standard, I mean, let's go for, um, there you go, Yakuza Kiwami. How big is this? I imagine this is quite a big old file, this one, and the system requirements alone will state the amount of storage you require. It's been a long time since I've used the user interface of Steam, but I hope you get the point. Bottom line, using a 10 GBE NAS to host um, and store your games is hugely advantageous, and with such innovations such as Thunderbolt to 10 GBE connectivity and NASes that support 10 GBE arriving at two to three hundred pounds now, 
it's definitely something you guys should be thinking about. But otherwise, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any more questions about the perfect Steam 10 GBE NAS, do let me know in the comments, and I will be writing a whole article on NAS compares about the best NASs for your Steam gaming library. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.